These are the best ocean-based video games. Hi friends, and welcome to the underwater world of marine-based video games. In my day-to-day -day life, I'm a marine biologist who moonlights as a gaming YouTuber, so these games are near and dear to my two special interests. But without further ado, these are my top five ocean-based video games. Beyond Blue was heavily inspired by the BBC series Blue Planet, which I will readily admit is my comfort video series. You play as a whale researcher by the name of Midai, diving in unique ecosystems around a tropical atoll from shallow reefs to impossible depths. Beyond Blue is more of a diving simulator with some narrative attached to it than a true video game video game, which is why it places so low on this list, but it is a genuinely beautiful experience for anyone who loves the ocean. Whether you love the macrofauna from whale sharks and actual whales to the invertebrates that make the world go round, there's plenty to look at. Beyond Blue features a linear storyline addressing research pressures to various members of Midai's team, along with a deep sea mining operation that potentially threatens the sensitive reef you'll grow to love. The game also focuses on an educational theme, allowing you to scan individual organisms to learn about their biology and ecology while solving some small puzzles and interacting with different creatures along the way. If you love collectibles, you can get bonus points for scanning every individual of a species, which unlocks extra fun facts and information in the game's encyclopedia. Each biome gets at least one dedicated dive, and these are repeatable after you finish the game or dives that you've done previously in the game. In my opinion, Beyond Blue is a little heavy-handed with its narrative topic, which I wasn't a huge fan of. That being said, the game does have some choose-your-own-adventure elements within the story, and I do genuinely love its focus on actual marine life. I'm a big Echinoderm fan, so it does spark joy to see sea stars and urchins on the seafloor, which are often left out, or worse, left on the sand, in games, so regardless of what marine organism you love the most, you're bound to find something that you love. From a marine biologist's perspective, I say the game is about a 9 out of 10 in terms of accuracy. There's some humanly impossible dives and information that isn't necessarily incorrect, but is easily confused and can be misleading. However, I love the wide display of biodiversity and interactions that you get with certain animals. From a gaming perspective, I'd give Beyond Blue a 4 out of 10. The objectives are very much collect X amount of Y style objectives, and the game is very linear, with the only deviations being your own will to go explore and scan things. The story itself isn't bad, but it's also far from my favorite story even within this list. So Beyond Blue is a great game to grab on sale or promotion, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it at full price. It's still a great educational tool for those who are curious about marine biology basics, but far from the best game on this list in my opinion. As a highly meditative and introspective game, Abzu is my go-to relaxation game. Created by the art director of Journey, you get to enjoy some incredibly satisfying graphics with a unique art style that still somehow accurately reflects nature in a lower polygon setting. Each unique area is teeming with life from beneath the waves, and accompanying descriptions to help you better understand what you're looking at. While you explore, you can experience the perfect example of passive storytelling. There is not a single word written or spoken by any character aside from a few opening instructions. It's on you to explore the unique biomes you travel through, taking in as much or as little as you want along the way. Not going to lie, I cried the first time I played through Abzu, I found it that moving as an experience, and I regularly come back to the meditation rooms to relax after a hard day in the lab. I won't spoil the experience for you here, but trust me that there is more to this game than just swimming around pretty rooms. In terms of gameplay, Abzu is simple. You swim from area to area, observing the unique flora and fauna that call each biome home. If you like, you can sit atop a statue to meditate and get a closer look at all the animals in the area around you. Or if you prefer to be a bit more hands-on, you can always tag along with some of the bigger creatures as they roam. There are occasionally some simple puzzles to solve and nautilus shells to collect if you feel like you need something else to do. My personal favorite sections are those with the currents that remind me of a particular scene from Finding Nemo. The biomes range from the ocean depths to vibrant reefs, magical kelp forests, and even some historical throwbacks if you're more interested in paleoecology. Abzu does a wonderful job of accurately representing the incredible diversity of marine life in a way that is mesmerizing and enticing without being overwhelming. Even if you're an invertebrate fan like me, you can find plenty of smaller, less charismatic animals scattered around. The game itself is short, taking less than four hours from start to finish to complete the story, so I'd personally recommend picking it up while it's on sale for best value. As I mentioned, I regularly find myself coming back to Abzu just for the sheer sense of wonder that it gives me, but it also isn't wholly accurate given its curated biomes and selected fauna, so this one gets a 7 out of 10 in my arbitrary marine accuracy scale. Its gameplay score is slightly lower at a 5 out of 10 because the game is quite simple and very linear. A lot of its value, in my opinion, comes from its meditative take on the ocean and the way it sparks true joy for me. I lovingly refer to Raft as our favorite ocean floating simulator, and I may be a little bit biased in my coverage of the game considering it's where I've built the vast majority of my online presence so far. 
For the uninitiated, Raft is a survival crafting game that places you on a small raft in the middle of an endless ocean. Trash floats you, and you gather it up to build an impressive ship that can take you anywhere in the world. Specifically, you go exploring any of the story locations that you can reach via plugging in a code to your receiver. Sometimes you die for resources, or sometimes you face off against annoying birds that would like to drop rocks on your head. Regardless of how you approach this game, Raft is the greatest sandbox-style marine game out there for me. It's a true survival experience with hunger and thirst management, as well as unique enemies to fight, but I am definitely partial to building up interesting bases, and Raft lets me build some pretty cool ships and boats if I do say so myself. Ironically, one of my biggest criticisms of Raft is that, for an undeniably ocean-based video game, shockingly little of the game actually takes place in the ocean. Canonically, the world in Raft was sunken via icebergs melting due to climate change, and now all that's left are these tiny scraps of land and your tiny floating square that you spawn in on. Most of the time, you'll be above the waves, either constructing your raft or sailing onto the next island. Raft truly is a sandbox experience where a lot of your enjoyment will likely stem from your own creativity. The eight story islands each offer unique challenges and fun puzzles to solve, but the story takes up a relatively minuscule amount of the time a normal raft playthrough takes. That being said, a literally bottomless ocean may be a bit scary for anyone with acylophobia. There is also the shark, whom I lovingly refer to as Jeremiah, who would love to munch away at all of your hard work. For its accuracy score, I personally think a 2 out of 10 is a bit generous. There are in fact creatures like rays, dolphins, and turtles in Earth's oceans, and that's where the scientific accuracy stops. Coral reefs take tens of millions of years to form, not a couple of days. There aren't anglers in higher parts of the water column, and the worst offense is of course the ocean tilapia. I will never understand why so many games use the tilapia as a marine fish when only a couple families are even tolerant of saline conditions, and even then, none of them are found in open saltwater environments. The gameplay is where Raft comes in at a strong 8 out of 10. I could and have talked about Raft quite a lot, but it is one of the best ocean-based games out there in terms of base building and a sandbox environment. It's satisfying to build up a good Raft, and it's fun to explore the story locations and solve their unique puzzles, and Raft is undeniably the best multiplayer game of its kind. While it may not be the most accurate or engaging from a marine biology perspective, it's still worth a try for survival enjoyers, particularly those with friends. On a very different note, I was more or less bullied into trying Dave the Diver by my stream community, which, if you're not there, you definitely should be, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't immediately fall in love with the game. This game is pretty much all of my other favorite games rolled into one, but the basic premise is that you dive for fish in a mysterious blue hole by day and run a sushi restaurant by night. Between the very satisfying loop of swimming and restaurant management, I easily put over 40 hours into the game just to finish the main storyline, it is that addicting. The art style is also incredibly unique, kind of a mashup between Stardew Valley's pixelated graphics and some more detailed, yet stylized, 3D renders. The whole concept of this game hinges around a magical blue hole that changes every day, so you never face any guilt of overfishing or capturing various animals because there'll be a whole new set that appears magically the next day. The biome also continuously changes, so you can explore the deep dark deep down, my favorite kelp forests, or a generic vibrant coral reef. Along the way, you get to interact with long-lost mermaid civilizations and help out with some of their problems, leading you into other unique scenarios like boss fights, some small side quests, and upgrading your equipment to suit your own specialized needs. While you spend at least two-thirds of your time underwater, the above-water portions are no less engaging and interesting. Whether you're managing your aquaculture setup to maximize production of certain desirable fishes, or using your vegetable and rice farm to grow more ingredients for unique sushi opportunities, there's bound to be at least some part of this game that really resonates with you. Even if you just really like the restaurant portion, you have to decide between training and hiring staff with certain special abilities and skills, and even managing a branch restaurant, all while learning the backstories of the people who work with you and the people who visit the restaurant. For its marine biology accuracy, Dave the Diver gets a question mark out of 10 because the magical blue hole canonically can spawn organisms from any biome all over the world, so it's not exactly trying to emulate any specific region or ecosystem. That being said, the game itself does represent individual animals with a pretty decent accuracy, even giving fun facts about various fishes as you load in. There's also a mermaid population though, so that complicates the science a little more. For gameplay, Dave the Diver is an easy 10 out of 10 for me. Between the wide array of objectives that can be active at any given time, unique character arcs, boss fights, and the satisfying gameplay experience of fishing and restauranteering, I think most people would genuinely love the game. Dave the Diver places quite high on this list as one of my favorite ocean games, despite its questionable accuracy, because of its engaging and dynamic style. I'd highly recommend it to anyone who has over 40 hours to kill and doesn't mind losing a couple weekends on a new obsession. To probably no one's surprise, Subnautica comes in at the top of the list for ocean-based video games. It's hard to beat the incredible environments and satisfying gameplay of one of the most well-known survival crafting games out there, and it is most certainly ocean-based. 
that ocean definitely isn't one from Earth, but it shouldn't be all the way out here on 4546B. Subnautica strikes a magical balance between linear storytelling, an open world, and just enough big scary things that would like to eat you to keep the world interesting. Whether you're more interested in facing off against those big scary things that would like to eat you, or more interested in experiencing everything 4546B has to offer, Subnautica is a game pretty much anyone can and will enjoy. There are few gaming experiences that are as satisfying as swinging yourself around in a prawn suit properly upgraded with jump jets and a grappling arm, and the vibrant, multicolored, luminescent life all around you makes each part of the map exciting in a unique way. As you build up the necessary infrastructure to dive deeper and deeper below the surface, you get the opportunity to visit so many unique underwater landscapes and biomes with their own special flora and fauna. Some of them are friendly, and others are… less friendly. But in all places, you continue to explore as the story pushes you deeper and deeper into the sea and into the lore as the materials you require to get your next upgrade are hidden somewhere in the depths. There are multiple stories running concurrently, like those from the Aurora ship that you crashed with, the Degasi survivors who came before you but are now nowhere to be found, and the precursor civilization of beings who once inhabited this planet. Subnautica is never boring, but it can be as survival-heavy as you like, or you can focus on story and exploration. In all ways, it's a fantastic game that I would highly recommend to anyone who hasn't tried it yet. For marine accuracy, I'm giving Subnautica a 10 out of 10, because who am I to say that Unknown Worlds didn't accurately portray some far-off planet in a distant part of the galaxy? It's not at all accurate to Earth's oceans, but again, this isn't Earth and my expertise holds no weight here. In its gameplay, Subnautica is also a 10 out of 10 for me. I'm a big sucker for survival crafting games, and I love unique storylines that let me go at my own pace. I also love resource hoarding, and Subnautica enables my addiction so readily. Say what you will about Below Zero not passing the sequel test and it not being a great standalone game, and I will still anxiously await the third game of the series that's set to release in 2025. And those are my top 5 ocean-based video games on the market right now. You are of course entitled to your own opinions, and I highly encourage you to tell me what games I may have missed or disagree with my rankings. I genuinely enjoy each of these games for their own reason, so whether you want to relax and enjoy the water in Abzu, or get your heart pumping while fighting a leviathan in Subnautica, I hope there is something in this list for you. Anyways, I think that's everything for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already, it really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.